Williams here, but not here with Kyle Snyder at First American Title. We've been chatting about what the market's doing in Longmont and Carbon Valley, which may surprise you who live in the Tritown area. Um, Kyle, tell us what's going on and what we probably didn't expect this month. Well, you know, we're in the middle of a thing that uh, is called a global pandemic. It should uh, it should rattle the markets. I know it did in the stock market, um, but even that came back. Um, the month over month, uh, this last April to the April before, it's only down, Longmont is only down 30% in number of solds. Um, th for the year to date, it's still up 3.5%. So that's really good. Average days on market dropped. Uh, av uh, number of listings dropped significantly. That's probably, that's the one thing you can totally understand. Um, yeah. But even average and median sales prices are holding steady at one and 4% gains. Gains yeah. in a global pandemic. The, um, uh, the attached market over in Longmont, uh, pretty much the same. Uh, days on market dropped significantly. Active listings are down, but you know, uh, average and median price is still hanging tight. But my favorite market of the month, and uh, this I think is my fourth month, I named uh, Firestone, Frederick, and Decano, the Carbon Valley baby as the market of the month. Certainly my favorite market. Yeah, well, in April, they actually had one more sale in April of 2020 than they did in 2019. Crazy. Uh, they're still up 15% uh, on solds year to date. Uh, days on markets holding steady, active listings dropping 10%, and median uh, price is up 2%, average price is down 1%. I mean, what more do you want? There's right. no, there, that, that's like, it's like insulated. It's, it's doing nothing, it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do, right. pandemic or none. And this was, you know, at the beginning of the year when we started feeling things stabilizing. We're like, oh, could this be the beginning of a shift? No, more of a stabilization. And that just, that proves our theory that we're holding strong, we're holding steady. Um, the sellers that are selling need to move and the buyers that are buying need to move. So we have very serious um, buyers and sellers in the market right now who are, who are keeping our real estate market afloat. Yep. Anybody that wants to go out there and look at houses with gloves and a mask and booties and all wrapped up and uh, jump through okay. all the hoops and accept the uh, COVID provisions in a uh, contract, they're serious. Yeah. And the people that are listing their house, same thing. They're inviting strangers into their house, uh, but it's under uh, adverse conditions. It's not something that we do all the time. You know, if you tell it, if your if your kids' friends are sick, you say no. Don't come to the birthday party. Right. Right. <laughs> Whole new, oh. whole new world now, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Taking temperatures, not allowing kids and extended family to showings. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different things happening now. You know, you, all you got to do is try a little bit, and uh, you can make everybody in the in the equation feel comfortable. You know, yeah. uh, wear the mask, wear the gloves, do whatever the agent asks you to, do what the homeowner asks you to. Yeah, you can bitch and moan when you go home. I don't care, but. Uh, if you want to look at the house, you know, be a good sport and uh, you can you can get yourself moved into a new house and uh, start building equity. So uh, one of the things that uh, I noted in my stats piece was how low the inventory was. And that was at the end of March. That was before people were starting to pull things off the market. Uh, it was right at the start of our lockdown. Uh, but where are we now? What's going on? My friend Megan Aller and yours who we love and dear, uh, adore so much. She has a pretty cool market su summary uh, down the uh, metro area. Her recent numbers show that uh, showings are at 80% a 80 of expected volume right now. Mm -hmm. So that's, I don't know if that's last year or the last three years average or whatever, but uh, uh, the way she put it is that they're 80% of expected volume. That's, that's market activity. That's, that's people wanting to buy. Those yeah. are buyers. Yeah, and she's doing some great comparisons to pre-COVID, during COVID, after COVID, and what we need to do to get back to that. Mm -hmm. um, now you mentioned equity in homes, and something we were talking about is: uh, Are there foreclosures? You know, are people not paying their mortgages? What's going to happen? I'm getting a lot of questions. Has the market softened? Can I snag a deal? Um, right now, the answer is not really. And uh, 
Kyle, do you want to explain why? Yeah, you know, I was getting a lot of those in the first couple months of the year, last little bit. And uh, it's usually because Zillow has these uh, red dots all over the map that says pre-foreclosure. They just haven't removed the ones that got cured. Um, and they're awful about it. So it looks like there's a lot of them, but there aren't. Uh, on a weekly basis, the notice of default list that I send out, which the notice of default is the very first publicly uh, rec uh, recorded, it's the start time for the foreclosure process. And that so is after have, four that? months. That's after four months of them not paying their mortgage. Right. You need to do a minimum of four months not paying your mortgage, and then you get another four months or 120 days before you have to, before the bank's going to take it away. So you get to sell it, refinance it, whatever. Uh, cure your problem. So that's eight months. Um, I don't think that right now under um, forbearance provisions that you can foreclose on someone. So if I've missed my last two house payments and I'm probably not going to go back to work for another two months, I'll have missed four house payments. It's not the same as skipping four house payments because I've talked to my lender and I'm, I'm in forbearance. How they take care of that in the end, that's going to be all figured out later. But that's what, if I start skipping payments in two months, then I've got four months before they issue me a notice of election and demand and another four months before I get uh, foreclosed on. So I would say you've got at least 10 months before there's any foreclosures that you're going to see, or a, a, a good number of foreclosures uh, that you're going to see on the, for, on the market for, um, for somebody other than the real pros to go after them. Right. And, you know, those are going, going to be ones that people are going to get a, want to get out of, out from underneath the debt and bills. And they've got some funny money in there. Yeah. It's called equity to play with. So you might be able to find yourself some better deals the, the tighter pitch people are in, but not till January of next year. Right. And if you're a seller or a homeowner right now struggling with your payment, please call me. We can discuss it confidentially and see what options you have. You probably have more equity than you think you do. Um, I was working with a man who was ready to walk away. We were just a few days away from auction. And I said, please let me just try to list it this weekend. He ended up walking away with 200 grand. He had no idea what his home was worth. Oh my gosh. So yeah, it didn't go to auction. We found a cash buyer who took it as is. Um, and if you're, if you're thinking about forbearance, again, let's talk because there's a lot of hidden legal consequences in there that you might not know um, and understand. So if I don't understand it, I'm happy to refer you to someone who does, but I wanna have that conversation. So don't think, oh, well, it takes a year to foreclose, I can stop making payments. No, you're gonna destroy your credit, you're gonna do a lot of bad stuff along the way, so. Talk to a professional. Right. And you know, uh, you've got a lender partner and Jessica up off, off who can really help people out and yeah. make, knows those numbers inside and out. And so, she's so uh, good at getting creative. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So, um, what do you expect next month to look like? I mean, you know, I, I got a feeling that it's going to be pretty strong. Let me see. I forgot this one number here. Um, I will bet you that we're continued uh, our 30% fewer sales next month, uh, okay. you know, by the end of this month. Uh, it's a big number where I get to, but uh, you know, that's expected. That was the hardest part right in there. That was the most showings, but, uh, and, and under contract time that we missed. Um, so we're in the catch up for that. So you're going to see a lot fewer, um, 30 to 50% less. And the, the media is going to make that out to be, oh my Lord, the real estate market crashed. <laughs> But it's right. not going to be, it's going to come right back gangbusters after that. So yep. in Logmont, in the last 17 days, there are 108 new uh, listings. 108, that's nine a day. And, and of those, of those, 43 have already gone under contract. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Percent. That's moving. That's a moving market. Yeah. So I expect is. to see good things come, good reports, back to normal-ish looking reports come end of June. And I do think that some, we do have some pent up demand. I mean, I had three listings that we're going to list in April and now we're listing mid to end of May. So um, they still need to move. And I think buyers are in the same boat. You know, I think hopefully landlords have been flexible and reasonable with people, but you know, if they're, if their lease is up, you know, there's, 
plenty of reasons people are going to be moving right now. So Right. And you and I have both uh, encountered agents telling us stories about multiple offers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a frenzy for, especially the under 500 market. Yep. Yep. Well, thank you, Kyle. This was helpful. And I'm sure people are going to be very interested to see what next month looks like when we have April's data. Yes, but everybody really please ask questions. Uh, you got a friend in, in Jenny, you got a friend in me. Uh, we can point you in the directions of people to answer your questions to help you out with some stuff. Don't do stupid things just because you heard it on the radio, okay? Right, right. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, you're welcome. See you soon. Have a good one. Bye.